Okay, so we're here with the Rhinebeck Village Tree Commission, planting trees in the village. We do this twice a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. This is our spring planting. We start with bare root trees because it's easy for people to handle them. If we had balled up trees, they'd weigh like 100 pounds a piece and we couldn't lift them. So we put the bare root trees at the same height uh, as the grass next to it, and they fill in the dirt, and then we will mulch on top of that. And we have uh, Sherry Monaco, and uh, she's the wife of uh, one of the members of the tree commission. Jonathan Cohen and, and Sasha. And Jonathan Cohen, Sasha, and... Drew and Charlotte are and, our children. Drew and, Drew and Charlotte. Wave to the camera, girls. Right, they're going to help, I think they're going to help with the mulch. Yes. All right, so basically, once we got the hole dug, we got to make sure that we have the bottom of the tree at uh, the ground level, because we don't want the tree any lower, because it'll rot away the, the base of the tree. So once we got that established, we, uh, we put the phosphate in the hole. Phosphate helps uh, the tree. It gives it nutrients that aren't normally in the ground that it needs to grow. Once we do that, we put uh, we start filling in the dirt. We like to add a little water. It makes the dirt settle. It gives the tree the, the water it needs at the roots. And then from there, we fill it in. We then add uh, we add mulch. All right, so guys, the mulch. Really cool. Now I love I just love you. I love watching this is what we want to do with the mulch. I, I can't find it. Yeah. I can't find it. Right, Sasha. um, Sasha's other little shovel. The, oh, so Drew has it in her hand. Well you, here. Why don't we just see use our hands? Look, well, like Daddy. See how Dad? See this? Drew? This Let's is so that when it rains, the water goes into the tree. And it doesn't wash away. You want to take and pictures? You can go work. The trunk of the tree doesn't the like to be, uh, like if you build it up too much, yeah, it'll rot. See, Sasha, you're gonna remember we planted this tree. Because it needs to be out so that it doesn't like rot away because it's yeah. already exposed. So anything that was already exposed needs to stay exposed, basically. We do like a bowl sort of situation so that the mulch stays away from the base of the tree, but when it rains, it collects the water at the tree where it needs it. We also take the sod that we pull up and we turn it upside down so that it'll kill the grass that's part of the sod, and it helps to add the bowl that protects the bottom of the tree and helps the water filter in. Uh, at that point, we then put our stakes in the ground on the other side. We wrap, we uh, we string them up so that they're protected from falling over either way. Enough so that they're not actually cinched to the tree, and it's not actually pulling the tree. The tree is just freestanding, but the the ties help it so that it doesn't get pulled over. Um, and then from there, we put these cages on the bottom so that nobody can uh, weed whack or damage the bottom of the tree. Because if you weed whack the bark off the bottom of the tree, you'll kill the tree. So once these are on, we then put a gator bag, which I don't have, but it's a, uh, a plastic bag that we fill with water. It holds about 10 to 15 gallons of water, and it will slowly water the tree over about a six hour period. And we do that, we try to fill those up a couple of times a week when we first plant the tree because it really needs it. But uh, as we go on through the summer, it's more of like a once a week thing. And then at the end of the summer, we pick up the bags and we leave the trees alone. So. How long have you been on the tree commission? I've been on, uh, it's my second year on the tree commission. I've been doing this kind of work for over 20 years now. But uh, I was asked to be part of the tree commission because of what I do. I, I do landscaping and stuff. And uh, yeah, we do two plantings a year, spring and fall. And uh, it's all paid for by the village. And basically we ask uh, homeowners if we can put the trees in front of their houses because we want their compliance. And we also give them an option of which trees they can have. There's a couple different trees we do, there's flowering trees and uh, ornamental trees. Basically what we're trying to do is replace our tree landscape with trees that can be trimmed and maintained up underneath the power lines so that we have our urban landscape with our trees, but we still need to be able to, you know, trim them and maintain them. So once again we're here with 
Trustee Gary Bassett and Scott Crookshank. <laughs> but we are a tree city. I know that you know there's a certain criteria to become a, a tree city, and we've met it for uh, I, I want to say it's almost 10 years. I was going to say 10 years at this juncture, yep. but and we know. plant like 30 trees in the fall and 30 trees in the spring. Yep. Yep. Between 40 and 60 a year. So I'm so, going to shovel some more dirt in. Yeah, there. we can put more dirt in. There. So we keep ahead of the ones that die. Exactly. Yep. not doing the tree commission no anymore. we've done some reassignments with the it's nice to get some new new blood in every once in a while you know i have we're not pulling it off yeah we're ready for water when it comes so this is not for we're also here with Meg Crawford, who's another long-term member of the Tree Commission. I think she was one of the founding members of the Tree Commission. She's an arborist and a landscaper. Right, and I had my own nursery for many, many years. I still do have a nursery, but I'm not taking the leaf tank But I grew trees and shrubs, perennials, and ornamental grasses. And Meg's going to explain to us the whole process of the Tree Commission and Tree City USA and what we're doing here today. So this is a cherry tree which we've chosen for this spot because it's narrow and because we've got a fence here and we've got a big road here. Part of the problem with the trees that were planted here before which were Norway maples was that they are too big a tree to go in a medium like that. They have shallow roots that fuck the sidewalk. As you can see that was the tree that was in this spot before. Also when it spreads out its limbs it blocks signs at an intersection and it can clog the drains uh, if there are any water pipes underneath uh, they tend to get into the water pipes so as those trees are taken down uh, we're trying to replace them if we have to put trees in the median which is the area between the sidewalk and the street we're trying to replace them with species that won't be a problem down the road so uh, this tree will be a beautiful spring flowering tree great fall color and it won't cause problems to either traffic flow or uh, the electric wires because of its narrow uh, profile. Uh, How long have you been on the Tree Commission? Uh, I was one of the, I originated it. <laughs> what I, year? I helped to write the ordinance for it, which created the Tree Commission. What year? Cecily, do you remember the year the Tree Commission was formed? Cecily was our first president. sugar maples along the cemetery road um, on the, in the new Grassmere side of the cemetery and we also got a grant to plant small trees to hold the bank at the mini park which the DEC helped to fund and we planted uh, trees uh, up near the hospital in that intersection between Montgomery Street and Route 9. Those were our original plantings and along Route 9. Thank you. And, uh, you know, ever since then, we've been trying to fill in spaces where there are um, empty spaces along the village streets and also in the mini and region parks. And we planted over 250 trees and all done with volunteers. And maybe have lost out of those, all those we've planted, maybe 10 trees, which is a pretty good average given the fact that these trees have been planted all by volunteers. So, we get our trees from a nursery in uh, near Ithaca, New York, that uh, has had a lot of expertise help from Cornell in terms of not only the trees they grow for bare root plantings, which are the kind of plantings that we do here because they're lightweight and they recover quickly, 
but also because um, they put a special gel on the bare root uh, to protect it while it's in transport and before it's planted. And uh, Nina Bassick, who heads the Urban Tree Forest Program at Cornell, works closely with this nursery that we get our trees from in order to uh, to supply um, you know the best kind of diversity of trees possible um, for people doing urban plantings all over uh, the Northeast. These trees go to Massachusetts. They go. I don't know how far north they go, but certainly all over New York State. And um, she's been very helpful for all the people that are trying to do urban plantings in terms of you know, advising them how to do them best. She's also advised us a lot on the kind of um, paving we should use along our sidewalks and underneath our sidewalks to improve the viability uh, and the sustainability of the trees we plant. And I'm hoping um, in the near future to get um, to get the village board to pass uh, in their zoning ordinance to pass laws that say when sidewalks are replaced that they put structural soil underneath the sidewalk which allows the plant tree roots to move through those uh, spaces without lifting the sidewalk. The reason trees lift the sidewalk is because they can't get enough oxygen underneath the sidewalk which is impervious and um, if they have a space that they can move through to get to a lawn on the other side of that sidewalk they will do it. So I'm hoping that you know, it's only long to be passed so in the future all of our sidewalks will be under laid with this structural soil instead of just regular um, Gravel. So what is the Tree City USA? Tree City USA is a designation that was is given to us by the Arbor Day Association and you get it if the village uh, spends a certain amount of money uh, per uh, resident uh, for a tree budget. And you also have to celebrate Arbor Day with plantings and um, they have different levels of, uh, of award. And if you do a lot of educational program, if you do um, a lot you know, of pruning and other things on top of what you've done on a regular basis in terms of planting, you can get a higher level of that. That's basically what it is. And it, um, you know, if you have a Tree City designation, if there are grants from the Department of Environmental Conservation at the state level for tree maintenance, tree inventories, things of that sort, you are more likely to get those grants if you have that designation as a village or town. So it's it's important for us. It also, you know, tells the residents that, um, you know, it's important to conserve our trees. And uh, um, I don't know how many people yeah. know it, but trees give us huge yeah, benefits, not only in terms of beauty, but in terms of cooling effect and health effects. And uh, they also absorb a lot of storm water. So um, they, uh, they are incredibly uh, valuable uh, asset for the village. Beyond just making it an appealing place to be. They're also said to increase property values and to increase business traffic in a downtown area. They they do that. So, um, you know, trees are an important asset. What the village Tree Commission is really trying to do is introduce as many species as possible. We're losing all of our ash trees now due to a, a, a bug. We lost our chestnuts a while ago and our elms, and having too many of one species is a very dangerous proposition. So uh, when we did our inventory at the beginning, uh, maybe six years ago, we got a grant to do that. It was found that the Norway maple was the predominant species in our urban tree forest. We had more than 55% Norway maples, and uh, there has been a bug that's affected maples in um, New York City and Long Island. Thankfully, it's under control, but if it ever came here, we'd lose every single one of those maples the same way we're losing our ashes. So we're trying to introduce a wide, wide variety of trees to avoid a catastrophic event like that. Anyway, and just I would appeal to anybody that's at all interested to please come help us at our future tree plantings. We need volunteers, residents, and once you've done it, believe me, you'll go down the streets and be very proud every time you pass a tree that's been planted. 
get to see it grow. So please come out. Please come out for our fall planting.